What is going on guys? It is Tony from Lomo Paintball and today I am bringing you the top five solutions to common troubleshooting paintball problems. So let's jump right on into this. Just kidding. Go over shoplomopaintball.com because we are the best source for paintball. We've got all the latest, greatest products in stock and ready to go. But and uh, it's not on the website. But He's always interrupting. I am always fine. interrupting. Interrupting cameraman. Go. Go. You guys also tech guns, right? So we if do. you have a major issue that you can't seem to figure it out on your own and you don't have anybody local that you can turn to, they can send it to us. Give us a call at the store. We give you the address. You can send it to us. We'll tech it for you and we'll ship it back and we'll take care of the fees and all that stuff after everything is done and over with. All right. Anyways, so the top five common problems that people, like Mark said, we have fields and an indoor and all this stuff. People bring us guns. Uh, half the time I can fix, I would say probably 50% of them uh, within five minutes. Uh, going over these top five things. First, biggest thing that I always see is the battery. We do, I mean, we do woods ball and rec play, but I deal with a lot of tournament players. My gun's not shooting, uh, it's cycling slow, blah, blah, blah. Well, did you check the battery? Most of the time people say, yeah, I just put a brand new one in. But was it really brand new? Did you buy it from the gas station? Did you buy it from a 7-Eleven? Like, was the battery truly good? So I'd highly recommend, this is what we use here in the pro shop, uh, the Energizer Industrials, either whether it be for your hopper or your gun. We use the double A's and then the, well, nine volt and the double A's. So first things first, no matter what, doesn't matter what the problem is with your gun, always check the battery and make sure it's good. A lot of people, Mark, are gonna, are gonna probably make fun of me for this, but I do the old tongue test with a nine volt battery. Obviously with a double A you can't do it, but most of the guns like this uh, XLS Shocker right here operates by a nine volt battery. Touch it to your tongue. If it gives you a good zap, well, Disclaimer. <laughs> Disclaimer. Are you going to put it on the screen? Yeah. Heart um, conditions if you have. Uh, yeah. If you have heart conditions, you got a pacemaker. <laughs> That's just what I do. If I know it gives me a little, little zap on the tongue, I know the battery's got some life left to it. Most of the time, people will pull a brand new battery out of package and it's already dead because you bought it from somewhere that's not a good source. Anyways, check the battery is my number one thing that you can fix it within a minute. Take your Allen wrenches, open up your grip. Put a new battery in there good to go because obviously if your gun doesn't have enough power the solenoid won't operate everything's not going to function correctly what is your opinion <coughs> on rechargeable double a's in a marker i personally i don't use them no i want to know that i have a fresh battery out of the package i don't want to have to sit there and i don't want to charge it overnight i'm sure a lot of you guys out there may or may not use them but Get a brand new battery. I don't care, we use Energizer. Get a Duracell, get something that's a high powered battery that you know is good right out of the package, not trying to mess around with charging up a battery. Whatever, I don't know. Let's, let's go to the O-rings, Mark. Are you ready? I am ready. Over here. What about so, O-rings? What about O-rings is the biggest thing. A lot of people, my gun leaks. So either my gun doesn't shoot or it leaks. Okay, so when is the last time you change the O-rings and a lot of guns that you buy brand new or even sometimes used, they do will still have some O-rings left in like a parts kit. So we'll just open that up real quick, Mark. I mean, obviously this is from the tech room. I've got a lot of random stuff going on, but you see all your O-ring sizes. You guys want to make sure you have a proper rebuild kit. This is for some of the bigger boys, you know, fixing the rec guns, the bigger O-rings in there. A rebuild kit with all the sizes, all the correct and proper O-rings for the gun. So if your gun is leaking, if your gun is lagging, you know, pull your bolt out. Hmm. All right, yeah, and once again, make sure your O-rings are all the proper size. You want to make sure that there's no gaps or spaces. Look at the manual. Uh, it is the age of 2020, so you can always go online or if your gun came with a paper manual, uh, look it up. Make sure you have the proper size O-rings on here. If your gun is leaking, most of the time it is gonna be one of the O-rings on the marker. When you buy a new gun, I don't care what company it is, they pretty much all come with a rebuild kit Correct. with the proper O-rings for yep. your marker. When you guys are always like, 
well, I just buy it used for half the price. <laughs> You're probably not getting the rebuild kit because the guy used it long ago. Yeah. And then you are the guys that are on the message boards going, does anybody know what the third O-ring is on the Shocker right, Bolt exactly. from the tip? Uh, I can't seem to find one at Home Depot that matches, and I don't want to spend a ton for a big full kit. So, so there's a plus for buying new and not used. There is always a plus, yes, for buying new O-rings. And then we're moving into, we're moving into the lube, Mark. Lube. So... You uh, lube your O-rings too? You do. Man, you are a, just... A, make sure the prop... So, let's start from the top. Battery. Now we're talking about O-rings. And now we're on to number three. This is the top five, five common, you know, troubleshooting solutions to any paintball gun issues. So, is lube. So, it's very, very, very important. Let me see that lube. Ultra Silk. We get some Ultra Silk. Shout out. Carry it in store and on our website, Ultra Silk. Um, let's talk about that. So you got your O-rings on. Let's say you rebuilt the bolt. You took it all apart. You know, we're, we're getting into here now, Mark. We're taking it apart. I mean, there's O-rings everywhere up in the top, near the back. You have to make sure that you clean all the old grease off of your bolt and apply a fresh new layer. Since this gun is brand new, it already has it all stocked from the factory. But what you want to do, as you can probably see, I'll set it right down here. Boom, is a very, very thin coat of grease on top of each O-ring. Any O-ring that's going to be functioning or, or making a seal, sliding back and forth, make sure you are you make sure you're lubed up, you know? Can't be can't be going in there dry, right, Mark? I wouldn't recommend it. Would not recommend. You're gonna tear the O-ring, the O-ring gonna come out of its groove, and the gun won't function properly. So a lot of guns I see that come into the tech room. Well well, it's not shooting or the bolts sticking. Either A, the O-rings are getting large, you know, too large or missing, or B, your bolt is dry as a bone. So what you need to do, grab some, I don't care if you bought it brand new, grab some lube, or if you ran out of lube, come and get some Ultra Silk, which works absolutely perfect, and put a thin layer of lube right around the O-ring. Every O-ring that you see, real thin, Don't you don't have to glob it on there, because that can also cause issues. So you want to make sure the bolt is lubricated and everything is functioning smooth and properly back and forth. And actually, yes. the, the not enough lube and the too much lube, the problem is actually almost the same. The bolt sticks. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. It's, so It's amazing. I've, I've seen both where guys are like, but I yeah, just got like, done lubing they'll, they'll, and you pull it out. They'll their and... hands in there in the lube and just lather it on there. No, you just need to go around with each O-ring, a little bit of lube, and just kind of twirl the bolt in your hand. Make sure it's lubed. Just yeah, don't glop it on there. And you every it on now there. and then, take the time to take the O-rings off and get the lube behind them, too. That is very, Not very every true. time, because you don't want to risk ruining the O-ring, but every now and then. Very, very true. Which, we're going to move on to the number four point right now, is going to be velocity. So, this may sound dumb, uh, but a lot of players don't know this. And this is why I have a set of Allen wrenches on the table here as well. Because no matter what gun... Trying to think, Not unless sponsored. you're rocking an old school 98 custom where you had a, you know, a custom turn knob for velocity, you're going to need Allen wrenches. So, for example, Shocker XLS, right there, Mark. It has a plus or minus on. I don't know. You guys might be able to see it. Yes or no? Yeah. Um, either way. So all guns are different, but on the Shocker and the most recent guns, like your axes and minis in the back, they'll have a velocity thing. So you want to do very, very, very small turns with your Allen wrench, depending on what size you're actually using. So you're going to need an Allen wrench, most likely. And you want to do, I would say, an eighth of a turn, like very small. Let's say you want to be shooting 300 feet per second. You're at 285. I would probably do an eighth of an inch turn, depending on what size wrench your gun takes. Make sure you have Allen wrenches that normally come brand new in a kit with you ready to rock and very small adjustments a lot of people will crank it they'll get their allen wrench in here like i said on the shocker it's up front they'll get their allen wrench in there and just give it a good old half turn you just went from 285 to now you're at 350 your gun might be leaking or you're shooting way over do a very small adjustment shoot the gun a couple times let the regulator reset on the inside let it you know the adjustments take place and then re-chrono. It's not instantaneous. This is an air pressure regulated system. So a very small turn, couple test shots, recheck it over the chrono again. That is 
I mean, besides the battery, that is a huge issue a lot of these newer players have. They'll have a gun that sat around for a couple years. They'll take it out and, oh, man, it's shooting 250, 260. I need it to get up higher. And they'll stick a wrench in there and they'll crank it down or crank it up or whatever you want to call it. But, no, small adjustments, a couple test shots, recheck it, small adjustment, get it to where you want. Don't crank it up. You're going to hear leaking from on the inside. And, God forbid, you didn't crank it too far and your solenoid just says... I'm out of here, <laughs> checking out. Goodbye. Yeah, mm. see you later. Yeah, so that is did a I just see thing. a Did I just see an O-ring go out the tip of that barrel? Right, yeah, oh, it happened. yeah, yeah. So very, very small adjustments. And lastly, guys, uh, number five is a big issue that I also see is going to be, it's called the board settings. So on this one, Mark, oh, I don't that's know That's not where I thought you were going. I thought number five was going to be make sure you bring plenty of money so you can buy extra paint at the field. Well, that too. That's always <laughs> good too. But, well, I'm not even going to. I'm just going to go over it. I, I was going to have you zoom in, but we don't need to go that far. So dwell. The biggest thing, people want to put their gun uh, out of the box into a Millennium or PSP ramping style mode, and they end up messing up the dwell. If you don't have a readout display screen like, well, I'm busting it on you, Mark, like this gun does, Shocker does, if you can't actually read what it's saying and your gun is being programmed by colors or anything of that nature, um, you're going to kind of get it messed up. People want to get their gun into a program. We're, we're done with this now. Into the program setting to change the ramping in balls per second. Whatever. And they accidentally mess up their dwell. The dwell is set for a reason from the stock, from factory, by engineers that work on the guns, that made the gun, that knows exactly how this gun should function and operate. So a lot of people, they hear on the internet, well, I Googled, how do I make my gun more efficient? Oh, we'll lower your dwell and you'll get you'll get 50 more paintballs out of the tank than you'd normally get. If you lower the dwell too much, which the dwell is, the amount of time the solenoid has to open and close, yes, at a certain point in time, you're gonna you're gonna be more air efficient. You're gonna gain 15, 20 extra paintballs coming out of your coming out of your tank fill. Don't mess with the dwell. A lot of people mess with the dwell. They say my gun will barely shoot. Paintballs are falling out of the barrel. So my question is, did you change the dwell or did you change your firing mode? A lot of kids and a lot of newer players will actually get in there and they see all these buttons flashing and stuff and they don't know what's going on. So they change the dwell instead of the firing mode and now their board is all messed up and the gun does not function properly. So that would be the number five thing. Make sure your board settings are correct. Most markers out there have a factory reset if you get into too much trouble, if you think you changed the wrong mode on the gun, look up in your manual, watch one of our videos on how to refactory reset these guns, depending on what gun it is. Obviously, if you're shooting just a uh, like a Woods Ball gun or a Tipman 98, A5, they're not like electronic out of the box, so no need to worry about that. Just worry about your O-rings and such. But anyways, electronic markers, don't mess with the dwell. And until next time, Mark, that's Don't it, man. mess with the dwell. Don't mess. Uh oh, Don't he's coming with back dwell. with songs, dude. Don't mess with the dwell. Dad has songs. So, guys, uh, top five reasons and what we currently see at our fields and stores of issues that need to be solved that can be solved very quickly and by regular marker maintenance. So, batteries and board settings and lube and O rings, all that good stuff. Oh Don't my. forget, shop lonewolfpaintball.com. We have tons of products in stock. Always the latest. Always the greatest. Thanks for watching and the Jerky Den for the best lean protein in the game. Mark, that's it, man. We're out of here. Take it easy, guys. That's it. No that's more. It. That's it. That's oh, it. It's over. Huh. You know what I wonder? Like when we did the Shocker programming video, and you you ran through the dwell, like the numbers went from one to I think twenty four or twenty five, yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah. I wonder, like, do you know what those numbers represent? Are those milliseconds? They're milliseconds of the uh, when you pull yeah. the trigger, the the solenoid valve literally opens and closes. So the lower you go technically to a certain point, like you can get better air efficiency out of the tank. But if you went like even one millisecond yeah. too low, it closes and opens so quickly it didn't have enough air to shoot the paintball out of the gun. Yeah, so, a millisecond is one millionth of a second. Yes, it's very, so, yes. It could make a huge difference, Yeah, actually. it's yeah. not worth screwing with. No, not at all. Knock Definitely. it off, people. Yeah, Knock was, it off. That was screwing around.